Jet Optera. <clears throat> Jet Optera is one of the companies that we kind of spotted on YouTube. Saw a video about their fluidic propulsion system. Yep. Okay. And and they're they're they've now got a trademark for FPS, right? Yeah. It's their fluidic propulsive system. Not your frames per second like you would in an average first game. First person shooters. We're not first person shooting, right? Okay. So and the deal is, okay. Andre Evolut, like like I said, had linked us into his LinkedIn profile. So we've been getting a lot of views on this one video that we did that was the flying car that you would want to have. Now, Corey and I have both got aviation experience and both <clears throat> not even experience. Professional pilots, <laughs> yeah. helicopters, airplanes. When we when we talk about these things from the perspective of what Jet Up Terra presents to the marketplace. These from technical thing. Yeah. We see that Jet Up Terra has a massive, massive design improvement amongst everything else that we have seen that is currently in the flying or VTOL marketplace because they have made an inroad in a place where many people just really didn't didn't either catch the drift or or make the jump into understanding. Yeah. Right? So here's the other thing that happened. Right? They've also been silently working in the background with government contracts. They just recently okay, had an army test result because they wanted to see if the fluidic propulsion system, yep. okay, when they put it in an anechoic chamber, was quieter than the other types of propulsion systems that the army has available right now mm -hmm. up their sleeve, which would be helicopter, drone, uh, other types that are, that are available in the marketplace. Yeah, props, jets. Yeah. Yeah, and and guess what? It, Rotors, yeah. It did amazingly well. Okay, so they are talking about the fact that if they have the same propulsion unit, that this unit should be quieter by almost, and I think I can almost quote at this point, almost fifty decibels. The only thing that yep, you hear yep. basically with this device is the pushing of air. Now we have naysayers in the comments of a couple of videos that we've we've the one video that we did on this already, right? But here's the other thing: they now count them have. Seven patents, and I believe some are pending, but I think five are approved, we're, 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 or they're in that process. Yeah. And then the other part of it is they have another contract now with the Navy, uh, or no, the Air Force, Air Force, Air Force, Air Force, Air Force okay, yep. to go ahead and do some more testing. And so the thing that we're here to discuss today is, look, I don't, I, we've seen a lot of the comments. We cover a lot of stuff on the, on the VTOL market. And the difference that I see right now is, Every naysayer, everything that I've seen, all of the technology to me is workable. It's sound, yeah. I mean, when we first brought this up, and we, we hadn't discussed Jet Up Terra, we've discussed them a few times, but when we first brought this up, and that's where we got a lot of our comments from, we were taking some of the concepts of the fluidic propulsive system and looking at the basic physics behind them, Ken and Do effect, air entrainment, air and, 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 um, inducement, and, and just talking about those concepts because they're proven concepts, right? So it was just to talk about some of the concepts, basic, right? Not getting into formulas and stuff, but just say, okay, these these concepts are sound. And then we also made uh, the the analogy to those types of physics uh, being in a workable product, which is the Dyson floor fan. Now I know that that didn't people when you first hear that you think, okay, <laughs> air taxi, airplane, sure. Dyson floor fan. You're like, what? How could that possibly, you know, you don't turn your floor fan off and it flies over because there's so much thrust. Well, of course, right. that's not the purpose of the fan, right? But the, what we, why we said that was those physics concepts are proven in products already a long time ago, just the concepts themselves, and then in a product already that's on the market that we know works, Dyson floor fan. So that's why we made that um, analogy, that, that comparison. For sure. But we were both quite... Um, interested in what would happen next with jet up terror and trying to keep track of them so we did we were keeping track of them and that's kind of where we're bringing it back today because we did more a bit more digging as we keep looking through a whole bunch of other stuff and found out of course these patents they're they're having and then more news as they're going to work again more with more government contracts because of things like being a bit more quiet which we know from our talks about air taxis as well as is another big factor on whether air taxis do or do not become a real thing whether they're a thing right because right. We already said, okay, helicopters, they also can transport people, um, you know, from building to building, short hops or longer hops, depending on what the, how, you know, what you're doing with it. But they're loud. Like, they're loud. Let's, they let's are loud. We've flown. There's more quiet ones. There's more loud <laughs> ones. They're all just loud, right? You, if you had Super an loud. air taxi, 
like uh, an air taxi uh, vertiport, as they're called, in your neighborhood or in your general area, you'd know if something was taking off or landing. And so especially why, in colder temperatures, why I wanted to bring that up was <laughs> exactly some of this uh, data from that we saw from this, the results of this army link. Again, the, all the links are down below. But one of the things in the army, when it says way. right here, let me, let me find it again. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the test results show up to 15 decibel lower noise performance in the FPS. Remember the fluidic propulsive system versus propellers before any noise abatement uh, has been um, integrated into the design. So it's just, just basic. Does it work or not? And then it's at least, it's still quiet just based on its uh, nature. Uh, and that's based on equivalent power levels of output from the, from the vehicle. Uh, with the data collected and, uh, and considering the directivity and atmospheric absorption of the normal day, they can now predict that at 300 meters, the FPS system will produce less than 50 decibels even before noise abatement, and then hence significantly lower at 65 a decibel goal, which is basically what the drone community is kind of saying for uh, urban implementation. So, I mean, you know, as, we, as Mike was said, this, this Army one has been uh, completed, um, and Jet Up Terra thanks the, the testing company for doing that, and that and there's some really exciting things in that, some of that test result that we can see in the article. And then, yeah, we, as we said, just the, right after that, the Air Force has now said, okay, cool, hey, we want you to do two more tests on, again, noise and uh, how so, lack of noise versus mm -hmm. their other, uh, you know, rotor or wing or jet aircraft, and, you know, we can only imagine where that might go. Super for, sneaky. For uh, <laughs> not just, obviously... <laughs> <laughs> Not just obviously for commercial uh, civilian applications, but obviously military stuff too. So that's kind of so the I idea. I want to give a comparative though, really yeah, quick. Yeah, have okay, it. here's yeah, a comparative, up? right? We both know what it's like to fly, say, an R44, an R22, or a Schweitzer. A Schweitzer actually, because of a th the three-blade rotor 206, system. 206, yeah, 407. Uh, 206, yeah. 407. Yeah. 407 yeah. is notoriously loud tail rotors. Uh, you can hear those coming from a mile away. Not a mile away, almost 10 miles away. Uh, the main rotor system, maybe not so loud. A Schweitzer... Not nearly as loud as, say, a two-bladed rotor system like a 206, sure. a Bell, okay, a big old Bell, like a Huey, mm -hmm. uh, or, say, an R44. An R44 makes a, a specific blade slapping noise mm -hmm. that you can hear, and it's very hard to distinguish when you're flying a helicopter noise between the tail rotor and the main rotor. Yeah, However... There, yeah, there's... So, just... Not, I'll let you go keep mine. Just want yeah. to say that there's... On a helicopter, there's multiple places where you hear that the yes. noise come from. There's some from the tail rotor, some are from the blade slap of the main rotor. Um, so there's, there's like a few different uh, places where different places. sound originates. And with that being the case, companies have tried to change the, the tips of the blades, the, the shape of the blades, yep. and reduce the noise. But And then we'll go on. So here's the difference. Yeah. If you're flying along, right, and you're, and you're in, in the pilot seat of, a, say, an R44, you can hear the blade slap. If the temperature's just right, yeah, and you're right 65 RPM degrees, and that, right yeah. RPM, yeah. it sounds like somebody's right firing yeah. a gun. Repeatedly. <laughs> Repeatedly off to the right-hand side of the yeah. aircraft, okay? And and it's loud. It's obtrusive. And you literally, after 25 minutes of flying in those conditions, you hope that you're going to make a downwind leg somewhere because you just want that noise to abate, okay? Uh, but on upwind conditions and certain conditions, it gets almost repulsive. And here's the other part of that. New York City, flying helicopter tours in that particular area. They're constantly complaining about helicopters flying over populated areas around the 9-11 Memorial, so on and so forth, uh, down over lower Manhattan. So if you're in, in the marketplace for a quieter transportation that will be imperceptible to human beings, because let's, let's face it, at 3,000 feet, if this is 50, 50 decibels lower, what you might hear is maybe, maybe the APU or turbine noise at the very least, okay? If not anything else. And on top of it, the fact that, and here, here's, here's something that I want everyone in the comments from the previous video to understand. If the U.S. government sees that there's validity to the fact that they're already looking at the noise abatement procedures of this as a propulsion unit, I can guarantee you something. They already see the success in the propulsion unit as a design, period. They obviously okay. have other. They have ideas for it already. If that's yes. what they're, if that's the test they're, if that's the test they're doing, for, then they have obviously applications they desire. And, <laughs> yeah, like super I mean, sneaky. And that's not. <laughs> that shouldn't be surprising. I'm um, surprised that they no that they are that they're funding that kind of thing. Well, tell, go go into more about that. Why is that not surprising? Well, um, if you want to think any any place where they would want to operate uh, more <laughs> incognito or mm -hmm. or have a uh, the ability to pick up or drop off persons or equipment uh, with less of a um, 
ability to be noticed by anyone in the area. Right. And this goes for anywhere, counterterrorism, and anything, anything really. That that shouldn't come as a surprise that they want to be as quiet as possible. Because again, we said, mm-hmm. right, if you want to take a bunch of, let's just say you want to take a, a special spec ops into some any place and drop them off somewhere that's not an airport, you got to use a helicopter. Sure. Right? Yeah. Um, helicopters are loud. Uh, and we know there's been some talk, you know, how stealthy was some of the designs, let's say the Osama bin Laden um, raid, mm-hmm. you know, that there was some speculation that the aircraft that dropped them off was a stealth version of a UH-60. Okay. Right. Black Hawk. Certainly could be. Right. Um, but the fact that they are still interested in noise acoustics and lowering the noise acoustics of any of their, their aircraft which could go not just for helicopters right we're mm-hmm. not we're not implying that either i have a thought there about something. but um but that again that's why i said it wasn't really surprising that that's something they in and how about this though know, so. i think the quietest way to deliver a man to the surface is probably by parachute if they can come in by a yeah. certain direction right yeah. but imagine this imagine not but only you want to you want to take somebody away like oh if you want to take somebody away it's completely mean, different insertion, right but in then extraction you get back out again yeah. sure but imagine this. Imagine not only is the craft capable of delivering people uh, to the surface at, at quiet levels <clears> or extracting people, but it's also probably at that point able to loiter within close proximity with the ability to surveil, strike, and do still other be, things. And still be quiet, right? Yeah. Or and and let's go less practical. Right? Let's go practical. You could now possibly have your own flying device, or if you're in a in a large community and you don't want to disturb people, these things could be operational at all all hours especially in the EMS field, in, in other yeah, fields and yeah. areas where if noise is a critical, critical, <clears throat> critical factor towards where you're locating your hospital or your, your helipad or Very heliport, sure, yeah, yeah. and you want to do late night ops, suddenly you don't have that problem. I think, too, we shouldn't discount the the applications that this may, the, uh, even Jet Up Terror is already talking about, with unmanned vehicles, right? Sure. And we're kind of yeah, talking, yeah. we're talking about uh, Jet Up Terra really in the sense that air taxi and transporting people, and really some, a lot of Jet Up Terra is, uh, uh, the one on their animation you have on your screen now, that mm-hmm. one's that one's a manned uh, vehicle. But I don't think, again, let's not discount the fact that the, the armed forces could use quieter drone technologies. And, and again, you know, again, if we take off uh, the payload could, uh, and the ability to you know to take out the people and just stock the thing with more fuel, whatever that might be, if it's batteries or fuel, whatever whatever happens to run on at the time, mm-hmm. then you've got more lo- more loiter time, right? Depending Absolutely. on the application. So, um, I think I think we shouldn't discount that the the, the ability for the Jet Up Terra FPS, as we're going to call the FPS. To be put in other applications rather than air taxis. Although, sure. you know, you and I have already said, man, we'd like to, well, we'd like I mean, to fly it, of course, the because benefits pilots, are, we'd love are, to fly it. But the benefits yeah. are are like lapping up on on shore like waves, right? It, I keep seeing more and more benefits: the high speed, okay, the lack of noise, less external rotating components. Yeah, less less components because look, outside, yeah. one of the hardest things to get your mind around as a helicopter pilot is the fact of the matter is is that your propulsion unit is usually mounted above or behind you. It's a Above. turbine or a reciprocating engine, okay, uh, and there's a transmission that's taking the shaft output horsepower and transmitting it both vertically and uh, horizontally. And the biggest problem is that transmission is bulky. <clears throat> it it has an RPM issue where it has to multiply the tail rotor RPM by almost six times what the main rotor RPM is doing. And you <coughs> often worry about the, the pressures, the torques, and the strains that you're putting on those components. Especially if you're in a fleet vehicle sure, that other sure. people have flown, yep. you're always hoping that the guy that flew it before you flew it within the same tolerances that you know are operational and so on and so forth. Yeah, whether it had a hums on. Right. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah. Especially the type of ops that you could be doing. And the difference is, is that... When you look at the simplicity of this design, and I mean that it's simplistic in the fact that it takes <laughs> off-the-shelf technology and places it back into an area where it's comfortable operating, like an APU per- being used as a propulsive unit. Mm-hmm. However, doing it in a way that it's magnifying or multiplying the amount of thrust that you can make. I was gonna, as, you're, as you're talking about the less components, at least in drive shafts, right? Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, okay, yeah, take a helicopter and take out the drive shaft and just... Say you need a high volume of air flying through that tail boom. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's but you know what I mean? Just literally instead of a shaft and all the rotating components and lubrication and all of everything goes in there and lifetimes, you just have a column of air. Yeah. Air. I'm sure it's heated, right? We have to manage temperature now, but I mean, <laughs> okay. So it's, it's just interesting. 
It is really interesting. So with that said, look, we know that people, uh, there's a lot of people out there that don't believe that this is happening. And uh, look, if the, if the armed forces are looking at it, okay. And if they have these patents and look, I've looked at Andre's history of his education and so on and so forth. The man has pedigree throughout his ability to look at this type of technology, deal with it and understand that this is going to work. There, look, he's not fooling anybody because there's nobody to be fooled when stuff works. So uh, that's something that we're looking at. And hey, let us know what you think because you've oh, been, yeah. you, everyone has been really keen to let us know what they think in the previous video. But the fact of the matter is, is that we wait. We we saw that this stuff was sitting there. We wanted to see a little bit more come out. And once we see a little bit more that's condensed that we can offer you, we bring you more information on this. And we and we still want to fly it. Yeah, we we'd love. I'd love to uh, see behind the scenes. Yeah. And uh, there we're trying to figure out when we might be able to get one of them on as well to yes. show to chat about uh, some things and questions you guys might have as well. Not just our questions, but if you guys. And actually, now that I say that, so if you're watching our video and you do have questions for Jed up here, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Yeah. And we will make a note, put up a, get a list going, and then when we uh, get uh, one of them on the, on the show, maybe Andre, if we can, happy to pass them on and, and get, get those answers. Absolutely. And until then, we, we wish those guys over there continued success. We want to see them competitive in this marketplace. We know this market's going to explode in the next few years. Yeah, it's, it's gonna and it's happen. important that people give it every opportunity to breathe because, look, Javi might be good. Lillian yeah, might be good, yeah, but yeah. there might be a victor in all this. And, you know, they're all going to provide different types of services. But he has speed yeah. and design on his side, I think. There's something definitely to be said about bringing a product or a service the first to the market but you also can know being the first to the market does not mean you have long term right so you may be the first one in there and it's like (laughs) okay yeah sweet we're the first one nobody else does this and then the next person does it uh, you know obviously a different way and then that's that's better and then you're done so so jobby lilium you know uh well because we know jobby's making some good uh, Mm -hmm. good progress there was just that video not too long right and we could hear. We would assume it wasn't edited in any way, but we could we could hear the aircraft pull up because it's electric and then take off as he's talking to us. It was still, quiet. and it was quiet. It was it was legit quiet. So that's 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 exciting too. That's really exciting. But again, it's a it's rotors, different rotating components. There's, it's different, right? So it's, it's, I I wouldn't I'm I would say it's a traditional, more traditional design. Sure. 